So, you say, what should I do? Like an intro or something? Well, you could you could say hello, I am, and introduce me, and I could say how you are. Or maybe this is it. Maybe this is the intro. Maybe this bit when we're working out what the intro is is the intro. I like that. Okay. This, this is the intro. Hey, Matt, how you doing? <laughs> I'm all right. What what are we here to do today, Ben? Well, I'm very excited to say the fanboy me has finally got, got to a stage where we can release menswear, the box set. Yeah. You're very excited to open your box set. I need to you right now. Yeah, I, I haven't even taken it out of the cardboard box. This is how new this is to me, so I'm going to... There's, there's a issue here, isn't there, where you, your anticipation is that that box set is going to be as big as that cardboard box? <laughs> well, it isn't. It isn't going to be this big. Isn't there, like, sort of seven-year-olds in America that, like, make millions of pounds doing this with toys? That's right, isn't it? It's a thing. That's, that's, that's nice. next career, yeah. Can you tell us a bit about this? Is this... Original sourced from 1995 uh, inflatable packing. Yep, it is. Yep. Very yeah. nice. And here we go. And here it is. It's beautiful. Um, all our best records. <laughs> all together. No, I'm joking. Uh, here we go. It's another box. Look at this. Here we are. Look at this. Yes. Who would have thought it? Who would have thought it all those years ago that the uh, multiple, multiple plat platinum, uh, million selling, uh, I mean, all joking aside, it's a pretty cool thing, isn't it? Very cool thing. I, it's a pretty cool I thing. Do, when, you, when you were doing these photo shoots at the time, do you, ever have, do you have any recollection at all or is it just one day blurs into the next? Um, no pun intended blurs. Uh, look at that. We haven't aged at all. We look exactly the same as that right now. <laughs> no different. Um, I remember that photo being taken. It was at Car Park. A guy called Donald Milne took the photo, who was brilliant and did a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff that I think's in here. Mm. Um, and yeah, we just sort of wandered around London and he took loads and loads of pictures. And then now, 25 years later, we all argued about which one should be on the cover for ages. <laughs> Did we? So we got one that we all look that we all look good in. But I think that's a pretty good picture, isn't it? It's nice. Right. Yeah, it's a really good shot and really nicely. It, it pops, doesn't it? Yeah. And the um, is that the bleed? Is that the technical term for it, where it kind of rolls around the box? Yeah. If it if it isn't, it sounds professional. I like it. it. Sounds professional. So uh, and the sticker, menswear twenty five twenty fifth anniversary four CD sixty four tracks, including the studio albums. Debut Nuisance and Britpop's lost album, Hey Tiempo, more of which later. Plus B-Size demos, live and unreleased tracks, 28-page booklet, exclusive uh, signed print and five badges. And there's a quote there from Steve Lamack. Soundtrack, long nights out and broken hearted nights in. More of Steve in a bit. Shall I, shall no, I no, progress no, to the next bit? Don't stab yourself with that knife. I'm not going to, but I'm going to do it like as accurately as I can without Ruining my, my, my digits. Okay. You don't have to use the knife if you're at home. You can just use any other sharp object that comes to hand. Okay. Peeling off the cellophane. What you got there, Ben, in the background? What's that? <laughs> I'm, I'm currently listening to the, the lovely new uh, Style Council compilation that someone's kindly sent me. It's very groovy. Give me some good... Uh, some good finger clicking Friday action. Friday vibes. Uh, it's finished in a beautiful sort of matte finish there. And, oh, here we go. Don't drop it. Can't open it. <laughs> yes. Oh, I mean, first of all, lovely orange line again. Should we start, let, let's start with the badges. So when we first released our singles, our first four singles, they were released in um, clear plastic sleeves with the, well, they were like gatefold singles and clear plastic sleeves with a name uh, meant to stamped on the plastic sleeve. And they came with a badge each, which were very highly prized for menswear collectors. And so you have Many Somehow badge, classic. Daydreamer badge, also classic. Stardust, little guitar. The Being Brave, water pistol and the Sleeping In radio, which I think Johnny's got. I think he's got the actual radio. Uh, so those are really nice, a lovely thing. First time in, I've got, 
I actually got a friend called Julian, who's a bit of a collector of pop memorabilia and stuff. And he's got the original ones. And he's really gutted that other people have got them now. I, I insisted on the badges. I, I love a badge. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, just a nice bit of a, it's a classic thing. Next. Signed, no less, another picture of Donald Mills, different picture to the cover, but I think taken on the same day. Uh, signed by Johnny, very suave picture. Johnny there, good fringe work. Signed by your truly. Uh, Stuart giving very good cheekbone action there. Uh, Simon looking all mysterious and Chris looking all handsome. Signed by Chris, me and Johnny. We did, we, we did a few of these. They kind of had to be couriered all around the UK to get them all signed by everybody. So that's a nice thing. And look at this. This is great. Wow. You can see the kind of spines mm. of the different discs in there. Because, yeah, the, all the singles were kind of almost colour coordinated. Well, I love the spines with different kind of colours. Well, we went back to Style Rouge, obviously. We're able to follow that thread, obviously, from the original artwork as well. Yeah. Yeah. So worth pointing out the Star Wars, who are an amazing design company, did all the work uh, for our original stuff. Has done this again. We got them on board. So where should we start? Should we do the booklet or the CDs? What do you want to do? A booklet, yeah. Booklet, okay. -da -da -da. List of all the songs on the back. Nuisance, A sides and B sides. These took ages to track down. Chris has done an amazing job in kind of finding like live versions and uh, B sides of stuff that you couldn't get anywhere else. They weren't on streaming, they weren't on anywhere. Uh, some live sessions. The original seven inch version of Magic Somehow, which is really good, mm. different to the album. Mm. Um, Dub Dreamer, which was the Daydreamer remix, which I think well, was limited to like eight and a half vinyls release or something. Mm. It's kind of cool. Satellite, which is really good, which is a B side, should have been a single. Uh, our version of Public Image by Public Image Limited. Our version of um, this will be our year by the zombies. Great song. Um, and yeah, Crash and a couple of songs that, that kind of that kind of slip through the uh, net a little bit. And three songs from Live at Shepsbush Empire, which was one of those kind of special shows that we did. Haiti Empo, which we'll talk about a bit more in later, and the and the rarities and demos, uh, which include the very, very first recordings we ever made as a band, more of which later as well. So you have this lovely book. Steve Lamack, we read a quote from him at the start, has written this brilliant piece for us, which is incredibly sweet of him. And just kind of gets it right, because obviously Steve was um, a hugely respected music journalist before he became a hugely respected uh, radio broadcaster and was kind of around a lot at the time. So he talks here about meeting us at what the Good Nixer pub was like in the mid 90s, which was the pub we all used to hang out in. And kind of, yeah, sort of captures the, um, it's a really lovely essay. Thank you very much, Steve, as well. Worth reading. What, what was that pub like then, Matt? Because I, I always wanted to go to the Good Mixer, but unfortunately I, I lived in a village called Angring down in West Sussex and it seemed like an awful long way away. <laughs> was it actually it a was a shithole. It was a, a shithole. Yeah. Um, but it was, it was, it's funny, isn't it? Some places kind of become slightly mythologised yeah. in their own world. And it was because you could go in and you would see, like, as Morris Steve, there's Grand Cox and there's a couple of people from Elastica. There's, you know, it was like that mm. until eventually everyone realised it was like that and lots of people started going there to try and get autographs and stuff. But it was a great pub. We basically lived there. We just moved in. We used to have our fan club mail sent to the pub. Um, then we have uh, another nice Donna Mill picture. Oh, this the mod uh, uh, sorry? Very mod. I don't care. Yeah, this was this was extremely mod. This was this that was quite early one because everyone's still got the suits on. Um, yeah, it was a pretty early picture. That that's my old school time. Weirdly, <laughs> John looked great there. Look at that. He looks like some kind of crazy alien. Yeah. And Chris is about four years old, <laughs> as was talked about a lot at the time. Uh, then we've got a nice little um, kind of history of the band. Uh, nice fonts there, font fans. Uh, just talking about kind of what happened in a nutshell. Uh, another lovely picture. Johnny got the John Lydon tartan trousers on again. Also rocking serious cheekbones. I'm looking like a policeman who's wandered into the shot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was also mentioned a lot at the time. Yeah. And uh, smoking as well. Look at that. Smoking cigarettes. Don't, worry, Don't get that in anymore, do you? 
I, I couldn't do that. I couldn't do that haircut either. Mine, mine looked very much like yours at the time. I just gave up trying and just did that instead. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, John, Johnny basically just arrived like that. That wasn't like a look. When I first met him, he was like, "Oh, you're a front man in a band." Straight away, it's like it's kind of. He still looks like that. It's kind of yeah. It's it's not even the role he was meant to play. It's just kind of who he is. Um, then we have we have menswear in our own words. This was a bit of um, an epic thing. We sort of before lockdown. I got together with Johnny and Chris and did these big epic interviews yeah. with them all about everything, what happened in quite a lot of detail and some of the stories and how, what it was like from our perspective, really. Because, you know, regardless of what you want to say about menswear, uh, a lot happened very, very quickly. We got kind of well known in a very short period of time. Mm. And that's, that was kind of nuts. So we talk a lot about that. Um, we did like we did like four hours of interview. There is still a desire to turn that interview into something. I still feel that there's a podcast there. I think we'll see another lovely picture. Yep, Stuart looking like an absolute ace face. Look at that, rocking a cream roll neck. Yeah, that's a cool look. Yeah, that's a cool look. It's a very good look, Stu. Um, we did speak to Stuart because lockdown happened. That's the only reason that we did do the interview with him. That's the only reason he's not in there was that it kind of became difficult to catch up with people, but maybe it's something that we can revisit. And yeah, it goes away through to the last gig, and then we have the details of the records, the CDs, all the credits and stuff, another nice picture. That was, I think, just before we went to Japan for the first time. Nice Chris, nice Stuart, Johnny again, doing the Bowie hair vibes. Why are you a shit? Why are you a shit? Um, I, I don't. I I will remember for that. It was made out of something really, um, some awful man-made fibre that made it quite vile to the touch. <laughs> but it looked all right. Uh, more details about the A sides and B sides and rarities. Haiti hey, Empire. More of which later. Um, who'd have thought this was going to be released one day? Crikey! Um, and another nice picture at the end. Another logo from Star Rouge. Chris. I mean, we're talking a lot about hair, aren't we? That is absolute. That's a blinding haircut, isn't it? Chris has got there. Really good on it. Um, and some nice little credits to everybody at the end to say thank you, uh, including you, Ben. Thank you very much. Very kind. Very much. Um, so that's that. We do some discs. Beautiful. Whoa. Right. Let's have some tea. Hmm. And where's first record? Uh, a classic nuisance. Uh, I, I never know if it was top 10 or top 11. I can never remember. I think it was top 10. Um, all remastered, all on lovely. And look at that nice disc as well. I know it's we, and we credit the Bones and Red Meat. Yes, exactly. The, the Lost Track, Bones and Red Meat. Weird little song. Um, um, none of us got that telly. I don't know where the telly came from, if it was a um, stock photo or whether someone at Star Wars went to go and take a photo, a really nice photo for TV. We didn't get it, um, which is a shame because they're like a design classic TV and worth a fortune. So if you're watching Bang & Olufsen, send me a telly, because I want one, that one specifically. It's conscious that you guys were never on the front of any of the singles or the albums. I'd never thought about that before, but yeah. I mean, for a band as vain as us as well, that's quite a surprise. Well, that's quite cool, actually. I never thought about it. It was, it was a thing, though, wasn't it? I suppose, uh, apart from thinking about some of the pulp singles, obviously, that, and obviously, but yeah. um, I suppose Blur, Oasis, Elastica, they're on the front. Do you know what I mean? It, there's, a, there's a sort of school of thought where you either go with that look you are or... or... Yeah. Interesting, that. Um, on the back cover, nice picture again. That was David Sims. Brilliant fashion photographer. And that jacket I'm wearing there, right? Bear with. This is. I found it last week. <laughs> Does it Same still jacket. Fit? Still fit? <laughs> yeah, it's shrunk a little bit around the sort of the, the, the midsection. But yeah, it's the same jacket. I think it's quite cool. I'm not sure. So yeah, there you go. Um, uh, on loan from the Hard Rock Cafe in Tokyo. 
Um, Classic Orange Telephone, managed somehow telephone. Uh, this is the B-side, A-sides and B-sides. So this is all the um, second hand, which is the B-side to I Managed Somehow, very first single. I, I really don't remember having bought the singles. I don't remember it being different. And I remember nodding along with you guys at the time. Oh yeah, different version. It was only when I went and re-listened to it. And, oh yeah, it is really different actually. Yeah, it was like, that was, I mean, I guess I managed somehow it was only the, second time we've been in a studio ever as a band is the thing is the single that's kind of funny isn't it that's kind of cool uh so stuff from shepherd's bush they think fat kid music's a bit awful but the rest of it's pretty good <laughs> but you know you've got to have one clanger haven't you i think on a box set oh, yeah. uh once again nice color coding down the side next that look at that Look at that, that is Hey Tiempo. That is the great lost second menswear album. So um, we started working on this, 90, late 96, 96, late 95. And then um, and we did a bunch of demos for it and then I got kicked out of the band. Nice. And uh, they got a new drummer and they spent millions, what millions, hundreds of thousands of pounds all over the country recording this record. It took them fucking ages. Um, they used various different studios and the budget went massively over the window, over the, it went over budget. And, um, and it only got released in Japan for a bit and it's never come out. And here it is. And it's pretty good. It's a pretty good record. I mean, I remember hearing it at the time, even though I'd been fired from the band thinking, Fuck, it's quite good. Shit, I really wanted to hate it. I wanted it to be really bad as a bit of a fuck you for being sacked. But um, it's a really good record. There's like a bunch of great songs on this. And it's really nice to sort of finally see it in all its glory. Mm. And a nice disc there. We spent ages, or you and Chris spent ages trying to track the artwork down. Um, that photo, we couldn't find out where it was from, but it's... Um, Johnny will probably know more than me. It's a, it looks like a UFO at the top of an Aztec tower. I think that's the thing. And there's a kind of sort of aztec -y vibe going on with the font. But yeah, it's amazing this has come out. We've released a couple of singles from it, Shine and um, Every Sounds a Melody. And it's been really nice to hear. Some of it's been played on the radio and everything. So it's a good record. It's, is it good it didn't come out at the time? I don't know. It's nice it's out now, because people can sort of hear what menswear were doing before. I was about to say split up, but the band never split up. Menswear are technically still together. <laughs> they just haven't played a gig for 26 years. Or whatever it is, 25 years. When, it, when it would have come out, if, if it had come out over here. So it would have been, so first record, what, 95? So it would have been 97? I'm just trying to think where it would have fit. Where, where would it have fit in the context of other people's kind of albums at the time immediately where that scene sort of moved on or just interesting. Yeah. yeah, I mean, like I know there was, we did a tour with the Charlatans around the States before this and that had a big impact on us because we like, we were supporting them and that kind of sound, that organ driven sound, that kind of sort of quite anthemic indie thing. There's a lot of that on here. Um, so maybe we would have been in that yeah. Charlatan slipstream because they did some, some some great work. I think Telling Stories was I mean, probably good, Charlatan. Yeah. good records. So maybe that would have been the world we would have gone into. But yeah, very American sort of country rock thing, which is kind of Simon's um, preoccupation at the time. But it's good. It's good. There it is. And then finally, Rarities and Demos, the menswear mini. Once again, didn't get a free mini, you know, uh, which was a shame. So, you know, are we still going to buy a promotional mini? Are we going to do that, Ben, and drive it around the country, throwing away, throwing out free CDs? I did drive past someone the other day who still had a mini, and I remember thinking, I wonder if I could get in it, because I could never get in it <laughs> as a teenager. I wonder if I'm smaller now than I was then. I don't know. I've got more, maybe a more supple <laughs> yeah. um probably not could, never could work out the connection between the song and the image but it doesn't really matter it works because we say it does so this has got a bunch of interesting stuff on it it's got 
the original demos for our magic somehow daydreamer and stardust which were before we got signed we went and they were li low, some of the first songs we ever wrote which were three singles we went into a studio at emi to do some demos uh which they paid for because they wanted to sign us i think and they're great they're really really brilliant because they are us the first time we've ever been in the studio together we've barely been together two months something like that so they're really punky and they sound brilliant they really really do it's that's one of the nicest things on the record to kind of hear those songs um yeah it's really really nice because you can hear all the like there's a thing with bands when they very first start when they just kind of clatter through things it's all like drive and passion and energy and there's no subtlety to it but they're great they're really good versions um there's a song we did a song the band did for a japanese advert i think i've gone by that point for hooch you remember hooch oh god yeah <laughs> Lemon <laughs> <laughs> Boozy Lemonade, yeah. Uh, there was a Japanese advert. That's after I'd gone, they did a, a, a song for the Japanese advert. There's some really good demos. Uh, You're Never Alone in Tokyo is brilliant. Start of Fire is good. Um, yeah, there's some nice there's some nice demos there. A lot of demos for, for the what was going to be the second record. Uh, because obviously that they were doing it for years, so there's lots of things that kind of went missing. And we found all the tapes, which is amazing. Or Ben and Chris managed to find all the tapes. Um, and the We Love You demo, and a song we did for the Childline advert, a cover of Can't Smile Without You by the Carpenters. Yeah. Uh, that's, yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't remember recording that at all. Don't have any memory of doing it. <laughs> but it happened. If you can remember the 90s, you weren't there. Um, and it is, it's a lovely thing. It's a lovely thing. Very cool, isn't it? Um, it's been, it's taken us a long time to kind of do this and put it together. Thank you, Ben, you know, and the whole Demon Records team for doing such a brilliant job on this. Because it's 25 years, 25th anniversary. Would you think you know, about you're going to do something? Would you think about it? Probably, yeah. Do you think would you, where does nostalgia start? 25? Is that is that the is that the key number? Because there's, I think. I one don't of, know. One of the things that's worked really well so far is how, how much love's been sort of poured out about, about this now. I don't know whether 25 yeah. is like a nice, a nice window to look back on, doesn't it? Yeah, I think you get, maybe there's enough distance on the past. I didn't want to have anything to do with Menzo for years. And then kind of like sort of crept back into my life. And then you start to become quite proud of it. And then, you know, the sort of, at one point, the slightly snidey kind of like, oh yeah, you're just a joke man. Turns into something where you're like, actually, it was a pretty remarkable thing to be part of, you know. As we've said a lot, keep saying, you know, if the first four songs you write, the first four singles, pretty much, and they all go top 20. That's great. That's not a manufactured group. Um, and yeah, I think it's, it's nice. I think there's a certain amount of affection for it. And as, I, you know, as I've said a million times, it's a moment in people's lives that they really enjoyed. It came out when people were, you know, like finding out who they were for the first time and, you know, going to gigs and music was all about them. And that, that's what's great about the record. It's a moment. It's an absolute moment. And now I think, yeah, maybe it would have sounded a bit dated 10 years ago, but now it feels like it captures a very specific time, mm. which I'm really proud of. Really, I am genuinely proud of this. It's a really lovely thing to have. Well done, Demon Records. And it's been really nice for the whole band to kind of start speaking to each other again, you know, and kind of hang out as much as we can virtually. You well, know? Maybe it'd be a gig one day, yeah? Well, I said, I said, if we could do a gig on the roof of the Good Mixer, <laughs> you know what the Beatles did um, their final show at the top of Sa uh, building on Savile Row if we could play the top of the mixer the roof with no cameras just like so you could just hear it when people were walking past I'd be up for that <laughs> but I don't know what anybody else thinks <laughs> it's really good oh brilliant